simply this. Is the Quran, is that, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah I mean, for, for an English man, it's Quran, but Quran. you can say Quran. I say Quran all the time. Quran. That's how I say it. I'm yeah. trying. <laughs> is the Quran preserved in the theological sense, dot for dot? Because I know the first question, if I ask, is it preserved, is, hmm. well, what do you mean? by preserved. Right, right, and right. so I'm asking in the traditional fundamentalist sense where people are out there acting like everything is inerrant, infallible, dot for dot from right, the original. Right. Is that the case? Yeah. So, so, I mean, it, it's exactly as you said, like, um, how do you define preservation? Right. Uh, and that's, that, that's really a, you know, a question that's, that's not always that easy to answer. And you, you, you jump right in with, with a difficult question. So let's try. Um, <laughs> So, you know, when we're talking about the Quranic text, um, it is known, it is a very, very stable text. Uh, it has actually changed very, very little uh, from right. its canonization uh, around 650. Um, and I, I I'm pretty firmly believe that, that the Quran was standardized, as the tr tradition tells us, by Othman. He had a standard text created, sent it out um, to, to different parts of the world, and of the Islamic world, of course, at the time. Um, and after that, the text basically hasn't changed. Uh, that's true. Uh, what has changed, so so essentially, so he, he has four copies made of the text and those differ a little bit from one another. And those differences, um, are probably just a result of scribal mistakes. Uh, the differences that are there are really tiny. You know, one says, and he said, and the other one, a verse just starts with he said, and and is missing. Well, that's not another theologically very important thing. So why would you put that in there in, on purpose? Now, um, so, so that's one thing you get. You get, you know, a text that is somewhat different in these different regions, but very tiny. I mean, it's a very, very small number. So we're, when we're talking about it, um, we're talking about, about 40 differences, maybe a tiny bit more. Um, and those are the differences between the texts. And after that, um, the text has been copied meticulously. And even those four, your first four copies are very meticulously copied. And basically, um, the text as we have it today is more or less the same as the way that Rahman has standardized it. Um, more or less, I say, uh, there's some spelling differences. So some words change spelling over time, um, but you know they change spelling over time. It's just small, small spelling differences. Uh, but in terms of words, it's word for word identical to of man's text. Right. Let's take off theological glasses and just look at this as a historian, the same way I would maybe ask you to look at a, a let's say a second century document or something mm -hmm. biblically, right? You will right. approach that. I want you to not care what Christians think, so to speak, right. and say, right. okay, um, maybe it's not what fundamentalist Christians down in Florida who are in a, you Ooh. know, fundamentalist, uh, literalist church. Yeah. It's not that, it's not that kind of preserved, but it is very preserved and you can give your explanation. Would that be fair to say that historians who are approaching this without kind of the traditional lens are going to say, well, we have good reason to say this is far better preserved than what we see in biblical studies, but yet it may not be perfectly preserved, identical right. dot for dot. Yeah, so 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 there's an interesting interesting. Um, so yes, it was incredibly well preserved. So yes, it was incredibly well preserved. And depending on what you call perfect right. um, is, is kind of what it comes down to. So, so let's put it like this. Um, what I just told you, basically, all these things that I just told you about, about the text, yeah. these are all things that the Islamic tradition knows and says is true, right? They right. are aware that there are differences between the, the, the codices because they recorded them themselves. We have medieval literature that says, you know, um, the, the uh, Mus'haf, so that's, that's the name for the codex uh, right. of the Quran, in Kufa um, has this variant, and the one in Basra has this variant instead. And 
to them that apparently was not an issue for for you know believing that the text was preserved um if you're like well that's not what preserve means to me i mean that's fine but that's clearly you know how they understood the text they understood the text to have differences they understood the text um to be recited in different ways and that did not get in the way of them thinking the text is preserved and right. so maybe that perfectly is 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 i, I don't know I, I think it's a bit of a almost almost a red herring um are, are they really talking about perfectly uh, and what what where is the perfection in this right and right. and um i think people get a little um distracted by this Perfectly preserved. Perfectly preserved. Perfectly preserved Quran. People get a little um, distracted by this, also through the polemics that go around uh, uh, around about this. But it's of course absolutely absurd um, to see these kind of polemics between, say, you know, uh, Christian fundamentalists and, and Muslims, where the Christians are saying, "Look, your bo book isn't preserved." It's like, well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good but, point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you you literally do not have anything, you know, like the first 200 years. And then you have like a credit card size thing. It's like, well, the Quran is complete. Um, we have really a complete Quran, basically, um, in fragments, right, uh, of different manuscripts, multiple times attested within the first century. Um, that is just not something you can say about the Bible at all. Uh, and it's, you know, front front to back. And, you know, there are some bits that we don't have multiple attestations of, but we basically have the full text in the first century. In the really first well century, preserved. he's talking about the first century of oh, yes. uh, Muhammad. V. So, so, no, no, I just want to clarify yeah. for audience. He's yes. probably so, it, Islamic, so Islamic calendar starts at um, the, the migration of Muhammad to uh, Medina. Right. Uh, which is about 10 years before his death. So that, that puts it somewhere for you. I just um, want to yeah. get like people used to that on my channel because they're going to hear more yeah. academics from Islam. Yeah, yeah. Say no, first century, second time. century. Well, certainly when I'm <laughs> talking first, second, third century, that's first, second, third century Hitching, and I'll certainly be doing that. I try to recalculate, but I'm bad. It's okay. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that and I respect that. And yes, I think that that's hypocritical of Christians to run mm -hmm. around and want to try and uh, you know, do that and then not even mm -hmm. no, 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 we have preservation and P52 is the earliest, right. like, like you said, credit card, not even credit card, like smaller no, no. size fragment. And that's what you're hinging on.
Uh, but in terms of words, it's word for word identical to Othman's text. chapters of the Quran being lost forever, large passages being lost forever, verses being eaten by a sheep lost forever. Compilation of the Quran as it began with Abu Bakr. He said to Zayd, search for fragmentary scripts of the Quran and collect it in one book. This was very difficult. There is no no historical tradition, um, you know, from 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 pre modern times that is as meticulous about this kind of stuff as you know uh, the Islamic tradition is. Islamic tradition goes to extreme lengths to figure out: okay, is this person trustworthy? Is this train of tra transmission does it make sense? Um, uh, you know, is it is it plausible that these two people would have met each other? Do we have reasons to think that this guy is a liar? Right. They are, and they go through all, all the details. And we have big books, uh, tomes that are collecting these kinds of things. And of course, hadith, so saints of the prophet, um, are graded, right? They say, you know, this one is good, this one is bad, this one is unreliable, and wow. uh, that's very important. So what Uthman did was he made sure that the one text which was agreed upon by the companions of the Prophet, the people who lived and walked with him and heard from him directly and knew the contents of the Quran, once that was prepared and approved upon, he ordered that the others should be burned because they may contain mistakes, they may contain variant readings, and rather than confuse the public, give them the one pure word of God and promote that one. Now what's wrong with that? If Christians had a text which is approved by the disciples of Jesus, they would defend that with their very lives and I wouldn't blame them. But we do not have such a text, folks.